Hi there. Jim here, the father of the father and son duo of Fantasy for the Ages. I'm coming to you today as we wrap up 2021 and look ahead to 2022. I've been a lifelong pleasure reader, mostly fantasy fiction, some sci-fi. As a teen and young adult, I read voraciously. I remember summers just wanting to stay inside and read in my room, and my parents shooing me outside, you need fresh air, go play. <sighs> Somewhere around the time the Wheel of Time ended, life got busy in new ways. And while I never quite quit reading, I definitely slowed down from what I'd done earlier in my life. I wasn't discovering and enjoying quite as much new literature. Then, this past year, Zach and I decided to do this podcast. And I started to discover just how much the fantasy genre had blown up while I wasn't paying very close attention. This has given me, a very goal-driven individual, a new challenge. I'm working with great pleasure to read classic fantasy that I'd missed, great stuff that came along over the past 10 years or so, and keeping up with new books that keep on coming and are big now. The result is that I've read more in just this past year than I think I may have read over the past five. It's all about intentionality, and I'm loving every minute of it. So I thought I'd review with you here today in this video what I've read this year with some brief comments, and then look ahead to where I'm heading in 2022. If you like what you hear today, be sure to like and subscribe on this video because I'd like to bring more content like this to you over the course of this next year. So give me some feedback. How does this work for you? Hopefully also some of these things I'm going to suggest to you are ones you maybe haven't read yet, and I'll give you a reason why you might want to and add it to your own TBR list. First off, over the course of this past year, I did a complete reread of The Wheel of Time, all 14 books plus the prequel, New Spring. Now, of course, that was important because Zach and I are focusing on The Wheel of Time for a heavy part of our podcast content. And I wanted it to be fresh now. I had not read or reread anything from the series since 2013 when A Memory of Light, the conclusion, finally came out. I'd reread many of the early books multiple times. Each time a new book would come out, I'd do a fresh reread. But for those last three books that Brandon Sanderson helped us out with, I read those only once. Treasured reading time in my experience, but then it was done. Then I was done. And that's kind of where I more or less started to fall off of reading as much as I had before. Well, this reread this past year started in January, finished in November. Amazing. I, I gained so many new insights, not just from those last three books where it was only my second time through, but even all the way back at the beginning. And I still stand by. The Wheel of Time is one of those series you can reread and reread and reread, and it will continue to be fresh and engaging for you in additional ways. Okay, so that lasted nearly all of 2021, but I didn't stop there. I mean, that's just in the background going on constantly. I'm also doing a deeper reread of each of those books as we do focus on it for podcast episodes, and we're just finishing now The Dragon Reborn, so we've got through the first three books in a much deeper reread. But lots of other things found time for me to get to this year, so let me break them down. First off, in January, I read Brandon Sanderson's Rhythm of War, book four of the Stormlight Archive. It's a massive book, nearly 1,300 pages. Now, I don't read as quickly as some people do, partly because I'm always reading multiple things at the same time, and now also I'm creating content for Fantasy for the Ages, so it took me five weeks to get through this book. I found it to be a worthy sequel to the first three massive books of the Stormlight Archive. Now, Rhythm of War came out in November 2020, and I had pre-ordered it as soon as I heard it was coming out. So how come I didn't read it until January? Well, there's a story here. See, thinking back in, in history of my reading, I think I first 
Well, I know I first came upon Brandon Sanderson when he finished The Wheel of Time. I hadn't even heard of him before that. And I loved what he did with it. It was such a worthy ending that then I explored. What else is out there? Well, I know I found Mistborn. I uh, read the original Mistborn trilogy at that point, and later on went on to read the first two books of Era 2. I've got those done already. I also found his uh, YA series, uh, The Reckoners, and uh, those three books and the, the novella, uh, Mitosis, that's in there too. I read all of those. Fairly quick, easy reads. I enjoyed them. Something very different. So, I'm thinking that back while I was waiting for A Memory of Light, so Brandon Sanderson has brought two of the final books to completion, and, and we're still working on the third one. I'm looking around for what else can I read, and I found the first book of the Stormlight Archive, The Way of Kings. Brandon Sanderson, let me read this too. Again, huge book. About 25% of the way in, I petered out. It was just taking so long to establish where it was going, and I, I don't know why, but I guess I lost interest. I, I didn't have the stamina to make it through such a Sanderson tome yet. I needed some more payoff, some more action, and it just wasn't there for me. And that's how it is for some people. It might have been that I hadn't got any farther than that when Memory of Light actually was published, and I set it aside for that. That is possible, but this is enough years ago I'm a little cloudy on just how it happened. The point is, when the second book of the Stormlight Archive came, came along, Words of Radiance, I bought it. I was reading something else at the time, but I knew, hey, I have the first book of that, I should get the second one. So I did. And I never got around to reading it. And then Oathbringer comes out back in 2017, and I pre-ordered it. I'm like, oh yeah, Stormlight Archive, I've been reading that. Okay. I didn't get around to reading Oathbringer either. It's just sitting in my collection of books. Then we get to, back in 2020, Rhythm of War is announced. Book four in the Stormlight Archive, Brandon Sanderson's massive opus. And I'm like, yes, and I pre-order it. And then I'm like, okay, so that Oathbringer book, I don't think I ever read that. So I started right there. I'm going to go read Oathbringer. And I'm starting into this book in preparation for Rhythm of War, and I am completely lost. Like, I have no idea what's going on. I do not remember what happened before this book. So I went back and found Words of Radiance. Okay, let me look at this. What am I forgetting? And I realize I've never read this book either. So then I go back to the first book, and that's where kind of it, it dawned on me. Oh, yeah, The Way of Kings. I never finished this book. Well, now I've got three books in the series all sitting there, all over a thousand pages, at a cost of over a thousand pages. And pre-ordered on the last one, so buckle down, buddy. Here we go. And I pushed on through. It was still hard to get into the Way of Kings, but eventually I get way into the book where the payoffs do happen and everything starts to click, and I'm like, yes, this was worth it. All right, I loved this ending. Let's go on to the second book. Ah. <sighs> Words of Radiance started the same way. So slow. So much world building again. And, and background, foundational stuff he's pouring into this. It was a slog. But I kept going. And it picks up eventually. It didn't wait quite as long as the first book did. And the payoff was even better. So with that encouragement, I went right into Oathbringer. Oathbringer starts slow again. But you start picking up about halfway through this book. Uh, this was not nearly as hard to get through as the first two. It was definitely the best of the first three for me. And by the time I finished Oathbringer, well, it's January of 2021, and Rhythm of War is sitting there already waiting in my collection. So, whoomph, I went right into the fourth one. And this one did not start as slow. Rhythm of War is a little more action-paced. It's a little slower for the first quarter of the book, but not much. And the famous Sander Lanch, where Brandon Sanderson really brings his books home, that hits on about 50% of the book. And the whole last half of the book, you're like, ah, 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 
<laughs> what a ride. That was fantastic. I loved Rhythm of War. I'm excited for the next book, which will be the last book in his opening set of the Stormlight Archive. He's told all the fans there will be 10 books in the Stormlight Archive, a first five, and then a second five. So we're excitedly waiting for the finish of this first half of the series, wondering where he's going to take this. It's a good ride. But I don't think that's coming out in 2022. I'm not sure about that, but I'm pretty sure that's going to take a little longer. I'm not expecting to get to read it yet this coming year. If you know I'm wrong on that, reply to the video and tell me what you've heard. I know I could look on his website. I just haven't got around to it. Partly because there's so much else to read and I'm not bored. So I did finish Rhythm of War and then I'm like, okay, this is part of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere books. He's got a whole bunch of books in this universe he's created on all these different planets. And they are tied together in ways, a greater, deeper story that's slowly being revealed. And I realized I'm missing some pieces here. I'd read Mistborn, that's part of the Cosmere. And, of course, I'm working through the Star Stormlet Archive. But there are earlier things that are already out there I had not caught. So it was time to catch up on some of those. That was a 2021 goal. First off here, I moved on to Elantris. It's a standalone book. Uh, it's not a very long read. I enjoyed it. It's got its own unique magic system. Uh, the story is not very long. It's easy to get into. Uh, definitely would recommend that to anyone. I was glad for the experience. And again, if you haven't read anything else Sanderson's done, Elantris is a great place to start, actually. Uh, you don't need the rest of the Cosmere books to make sense of just that story. But once you get the bigger context, then there's some deeper, richer meaning to it. That'll just be good when you go back for a reread. Well, with Elantris done, I still knew I had other Cosmere things to go to, but first I took a pause because there was another book I had pre-ordered that was now sitting ready and waiting for me to read. And that was an epic conclusion to a long series, uh, The Last Druid by Terry Brooks. This is the 33rd book in his Shannara books and the fourth of the final uh, qu quadrilogy uh, called The Fall of Shannara. Terry Brooks wrote his first Shannara book, The Sword of Shannara, back in 1977. I found it in the mid-80s, early 80s sometime, and I'd gone on to read every Shannara book in existence since then. So over a course of about 40 years, I've read a lot of Shannara, and here we were, finally, the last book, the conclusion to it all. So with all of that in my background, it was a joy and a thrill to finish this series. Uh, I won't argue with people who say the Shannara books get a little repetitive over time, that he starts reusing themes, that some of it isn't as original as the earlier parts of it were. Yeah, that's fine. I still enjoyed the books. I still found he brought in enough newness to the storylines to interest me, and I appreciated the tie-ins in the later books to things from the past. He found really fun ways to keep it all tied together. Uh, in interesting and entertaining ways that I valued. So, thrilled to finish that one. After The Last Druid, I jumped back into the Cosmere to kick off March, reading Arcanum Unbounded, the Cosmere Collection. Now, that's a, a novella and short stories that are drawn from various planets all around the Cosmere. So it, there's tie-ins to novels that are out there, as well as to a couple of planets in the Cosmere that he has not introduced to us any other way yet. There'll probably be novels eventually, but for now, we're just enjoying what he's given us. Uh, these little tidbits. I loved it. It was a great, uh, easy read to get through. Very unique. It filled in some holes on things like Mistborn and the Stormlight Archive, uh, and then just gave us fresh entertaining bits of knowledge from the rest of the Cosmere. So definitely recommend uh, Arcanum Unbounded, the Cosmere Collection, if you're a fan of Sanderson and his Cosmere. After that, I moved back into another novel of the Cosmere, Warbreaker. Right now, a standalone novel 
uh, by Sanderson. I'd really been looking forward to this one. I'd heard good things about it and kind of was more interested in it than Elantris. But Elantris came first, and I'm kind of funny like that, so I felt I have to read Elantris. Now, Elantris and Warbreaker don't have a lot to do with each other, really. So you're okay to read either one in whatever order you want. But Warbreaker was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Again, a great, unique magic system, engaging characters, some nice plot twists that kept me guessing. I really couldn't figure out where it was going uh, until some reveals at the end. It's not a super long read. Definitely recommend Warbreaker if you've never picked it up before. Okay, by this point, we've gotten through the first two weeks of April. And now I jumped into something completely different. Because I'm all caught up on the Cosmere, it's time to try something fresh. And I went into Joe Abercrombie's First Law Trilogy. Now this was my first return to the grimdark subgenre since I'd read, oh, way back when, all that exists and still exists for Georgia R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire. Back then, I don't think we, we were even saying grimdark yet. But there are many authors writing excellent grimdark novels now, and Joe Abercrombie is right up there at the top. Uh, one of the many top examples. So, I went and read the first three. This First Law trilogy, it did not disappoint in any way. No one is truly good. No one is truly bad. There's a lot of gray all over the place. And no one is safe. You don't know what's going to happen to anybody. The best phrase connected to Grimdark that I've heard, and I feel is very true, is no good deed goes unpunished. Uh, this is something that I would recommend to anybody if you are ready for something fresh. You've done a lot of classical fantasy, high fantasy, epic fantasy, and maybe you're starting to get a little bored. You want to know what else is out there. Try the First Law Trilogy. It's gritty. It's dark. It's still got humor. It's still got engaging characters and a great plot to work your way through and figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, it's easy to keep reading. You don't want to set the book down. Uh, but it is not traditional fantasy. Uh, it's got some elements that feel like traditional fantasy, but what you would have expected is not what happens. I loved them. Now, there are additional books in Abercrombie's First Law World. There are a few standalone novels, and then there is a second trilogy. Those are all still on my TBR. I don't even think I'll get to them yet in 2022, but they'll wait for me. And uh, getting the first trilogy in is fine. It it finishes, you're not left really hanging all that much. You know more is going to happen, but the story of the trilogy is told. Very satisfying place to stop for now. Next up, I purchased a short story collection called Unfettered, and I read only one thing in it. I bought it specifically for River of Souls, written by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. This is an accompanying piece to the finish of the Wheel of Time. So being I was working through the Wheel of Time this year, I, when I learned about River of Souls, I was like, I gotta get me that. And it's included in this short story collection. It's fantastic. It adds an element to one of the more mysterious characters from the series, where you know there's more you ought to know, but we were never told it. This is part of the story. Uh, really helps you connect with and understand, almost even empathize with a character that otherwise you may not at all. So if you haven't got a hold of River of Souls, I strongly recommend you do it, particularly if you're a fan of the Wheel of Time. If you don't care about the Wheel of Time, River of Souls is pointless. There are a bunch of other great short stories in here by many modern fantasy writers. I will get back to a lot of those. But 2021... I just read the one. After that, I stretched myself in a totally different direction, something very new for me. I read The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I'd seen a lot of people, other podcasts I listened to, recommending this, and so I put it on my TBR, something very different from the type of fantasy I've read in the past. And not just a good story, I was told, but written in a very novel and unique way. That's what I found. And in fact, 
it grabbed me so that I got through these three books, three whole novels, the whole trilogy in just two weeks. Just kind of plowed through them. Now, they're not as long as a Stormlight Archive book. In fact, all three of them together are shorter by a little bit than a Stormlight Archive book. Nevertheless, it's a great story where each book of the trilogy has a different focus, a different approach as it tells one whole story. It features in Jemison's writing style quite a bit of usage of the second person narrative, which is not very common in most books. We'll either get a version of first person or third person in a lot of stories. Second person is quite different. Some people say that they find it off-putting. It's hard to get into. I didn't find that at all. I totally appreciated the writing style. I didn't have any difficulty with that. I had some other difficulties with the trilogy, particularly the first book, where it just wasn't my thing, necessarily. Some of the, the more modern um, concepts and uh, themes that Jemison was intentionally putting into the story, they weren't clicking with me. It's not that there was anything wrong with them. Certainly nothing wrong with her writing style. It just wasn't me. It wasn't something I was enjoying, but I could still appreciate it. And while I've heard a lot of people say they find book one of this trilogy to be the best, for me, it was the hardest to read. It's critically important to understanding books two and three, but I enjoyed book two and book three more because I found it to be more of just a straightforward story, I think. We just got to see the rest of what has been foundationally laid out. Jemison does some unique things, um, really intriguingly unique in book one, that most people I think will appreciate. Uh, it definitely was something worth reading. And I, I do recommend the Broken Earth trilogy to pretty much anybody who wants to try something that's uh, top-notch in fantasy. But if you find uh, it's not really doing it for you, you're not alone. But I'd encourage you to push on, let yourself be a little uncomfortable with the story, and get to the end. Uh, I think it's worthwhile. You won't regret that you've read the whole trilogy. From there, we went on to what is perhaps, for me, the start of my favorite reading series of 2021, The Dresden Files. I was somewhat familiar with this series, in part from first learning about it in 2007, when there was one season of The Dresden Files adapted to television. I loved it, but it didn't get renewed. Darn it! It was great, I enjoyed it, the whole concept was entertaining to me, and I knew, okay, there's a book series out there this is based on, so I had some general understanding what that might be about and figured I should read it sometime. This is the year I decided to get into it. So, June 17th, picked up the first book, Stormfront. Couldn't freaking put it down. It was so good. I love the voice of the author, Jim Butcher. I love the humor that's woven throughout the story. I love the magic, the mystery, the action that's embedded everywhere. And Harry Dresden, as the main character, is so likable. So stupid sometimes, but you just love Harry. And he's got a great supporting cast around him that are just real people that you like, you care about. That They have flaws, so there's realism there too. But they're just, uh, it's so fun to spend time with them. And when I say so fun, it doesn't mean that there aren't some issues, some dark things that happen in the stories. There certainly are. But I've enjoyed every moment of the ride. So I had thought I'd put Dresden Files, because, you know, each one kind of tells its own story, and none of them are long books, and I could put them in between other trilogies and sets I was reading, kind of as um, palate cleansers. Uh, something I don't have to work as hard to read through. Well, that's how it started out. But the series has been so good that that has shifted. So right now, I'm all the way up on book nine, White Knight, and I've reshuffled my TBR, so I'm going to do nothing but Dresden Files now until I get to the end, book 17. There will be more coming. Uh, Jim Butcher has said, he doesn't know, maybe 21, 22, 23 books in the series. He'll see what it takes to finish out the grand overall storyline he has in mind. Um, 
but he can just keep writing them as long as he wants. I'll keep buying the books. They have just been so good. Okay, at this point, though, in 2021, I'm still only the latter half of June. I decided to cross something else off of the bucket list. Many years ago, I'd read about well, a little more than half of Raymond E. Feist's Rift War cycle, noting that uh, six of the books in the cycle are co-written by other authors, but most of them are just Feist, and, and he's part of the co-author for the others. Starting with Magician Apprentice back in the late 80s, I read 20 novels in this cycle over the next 15 years. Reading a trilogy or a quadrilogy, then moving on to other stuff, then coming back for more, and it just kind of was always there, kind of like the Shannara books. I was also always reading the Rift War books. But after I got through those first 20 novels, I left the series and didn't come back for a while. I don't know, I forgot about it. Uh, I was just reading other things, doing other things. That was a part of life I wasn't reading as much again for a little bit. Finally, though, this year, I came back to the series, and I said, okay, so what else is there to read? Well, I found there's only 11 books left, and it was finished now. Sweet! The last 11 novels are three trilogies and one duology. Two books, I had to look that one up. Duology. And they were all waiting for me. I could read the rest. Well, as I picked it up, starting with, uh, in June, Talon of the Silver Hawk, I read all the way to the end, and nothing else except for I did squeeze in a couple more Dresden File books in between some of those trilogies. I had stopped reading at the perfect spot, it turns out. These last 11 books make one complete story that really stands on its own in the Rift War cycle. It references things from before, but really it picks up with that first one, Talon of the Silver Hawk, and builds and builds and builds and builds all the way to the finish. You're meeting new characters who keep coming back and tying in, and it's all within this one period of time. Fantastic. A great finish. Very worthy part of this whole Rift War cycle. So I recommend. Take a look. I mean, it's over 30 books. You know, 31 novels here. Uh, it's an ambitious read if you've never touched any of them. But I'd recommend, if you're curious, go back and check out the first one, uh, The Rift War Saga. It's four books, uh, starting with uh, Magician Apprentice and then Magician Master, which originally were just one book called Magician, but it was later republished as two. And then Silverthorn and A Darkness, at a Darkness of Senathon. If you enjoy those four books, that's a good sign. Then go on to the next three. It's another trilogy called the Empire Trilogy. And this one's co-written by Jenny Wirtz. So Feist and Wirtz collaborated on this one. It has a very different tone from the first quadrilogy. So what it's sharing with you is, is foundational to the rest of the cycle. You need this information. Uh, it's going to add a great richness to the rest of the story. But the tone is very different. The way it's written, very different than the first four books. And the rest of the series is written like the first four books. So for me, while I appreciated the story in the Empire Trilogy, I didn't enjoy the writing as much as I had around the first four books. So I was quite relieved when I went on to the next set. And oh, okay, we're back to what I was used to. Uh, still referencing... That Empire Trilogy a lot all the way through now. Uh, but again, if you found that not quite what you were hoping for, just push on through and relax. The rest of the ride is going to be like you started with. That kind of tone, that kind of style. All right, so that takes us through a lot of time. Um, again, I, I had squeezed in Full Moon and Grave Peril, book two and three of the Dresden Files during all of that Feist reading. And as soon as it's done, I went ahead and took off two more. So book four, Summer Night, and book five, Death Masks. Got those all done. 
loving how it was going and already at that point feeling pretty clear that I might have to read more of these Dresden Files books sooner than I thought I was going to. But sticking to my TBR plan, now it was time to jump into a fantasy series I'd completely missed all through the years. Terry Pratchett's Discworld. There's a ton of books in Discworld. I knew it was there. I never dipped my toes into it. I just always had other things I could be reading. But I've kind of, you know, felt like I've missed out. I should find what this find out what this is about. So, did a little research. It's kind of crazy as to what you should read or where you should start when you're talking about the Discworld books. It's not like one clear chronological tale. I picked as I did my research, The Color of Magic, a standalone novel focuses mostly on a character, Rincewind, who is featured in a number of the other books, and gave me a good taste of what the Discworld experience is like. It is a very different type of fantasy from everything I'd read up to that point. It's a little meta, a little self-aware, definitely somewhat quirky. I won't say I regret reading it, but I also didn't find myself desperate to read more immediately. That's just one book, and not fair to judge all of Discworld based on only one. I will definitely get back to Discworld uh, eventually, but I do still have plenty of Discworld on my longer TBR. Okay, well that got me all the way now to November. And I finished out November with a couple more Dresden Files. Uh, Blood Rites and Deadbeat. Oh man. That was so good. Deadbeat in particular. I couldn't stop reading. I Honestly, I can't say enough in recommending The Dresden Files. Not everybody's going to feel the way I do. Reading is so subjective. But for some reason, it's clicking on all cylinders for me. And I, I'm just going to keep reading these. I'm getting so much entertainment and joy out of Jim Butcher's style of writing. Now I'm to the end of November, I'm entering December, and I move on to a, something brand new, a trilogy that my son, Zach, co-host of the podcast, recommended to me, and he admits now he did it with some trepidation. He wasn't sure what I'd think of it, because, well, there's a heavy presence of substance abuse, sex, language, uh, really hits hard, especially in book one, but these themes continue on throughout the trilogy. And I'm talking about Lev Grossman's The Magicians, the three books in The Magicians trilogy. I'm happy to share that Zach's concerns about his old man were unwarranted. I was not offended and throwing this trash away from me. I found the story engaging. I could deal with the, the stuff in there that was a little... Ooh, you know, with, with all the words I've already commented on. Um, but still, the story sucked me in. Basically, you take a, a gritty collegiate version of Hogwarts School for Witchcraft and Wizardry, take a few students from there, there and send them in on, on an adventure to a Narnia knockoff. That's the magicians. I mean, there's so much more depth and detail to it, but that's a pretty good summary of kind of what you're going to get into with this story. I have to say Grossman did a masterful job of tying the entire story together so that things in book one and book two have payoffs to connect with things in book three that still make complete sense when they happen. And this book, this series would probably be a good reread too. To, oh, that's where it was going when things happened early on and you didn't quite understand. And sometimes when an author tries to finish and tie things together, it can feel a little forced, unnatural. I got none of that in this trilogy. I think Grossman's writing was really on point. Well done. So I do recommend it. Uh, I went, my wife and I both went right on into the TV series that also is out there for the magicians. We're halfway through the first season, finding it, I think, better than the books at this point. We'll see where that goes moving forward. But, you know, so long as you are a person who would be okay with a more modern fantasy tale, uh, not too easily offended with some coarse content, I'd say check these books out. You may enjoy them. 
Now, at the same time that I was reading the Magicians trilogy, I had finished my Wheel of Time reread, which I was doing with audiobooks. So now I had an opportunity to pick up something else off my TBR in audio format. So when I'm out on my exercise, I'm driving places, and I can't be reading a book, I can still be listening to a book. And I chose to go with a five-book series that's been around a long time, and I just never got around to, the epic fantasy The Belgariad by David Eddings. Classic high fantasy, and, you know, I'm just enjoying it in a very nostalgic sort of way. There's nothing uh, that is groundbreaking in this. It's very tropey, but it's from a time where these things weren't so tropey yet. Uh, I'm not finding anything challenging me in these books. It's like comfort food. I can relax and I can enjoy. Everything feels a little familiar. Um, back to my early days reading the genre. So if you want more modern and groundbreaking, stay away from the Belgariad. But if you want to fill in some background of some classic epic fantasy, you might enjoy it. And that brings me to today where I knocked out Book 8 of the Dresden Files, Proven Guilty in just three days, and have moved right on to Book 9, White Knight. There's no stopping now. I'm 100% committed that the first of 2022 is to finish the rest of the 17 Dresden File books that are out there. But what else might I be able to fit in? Well, let me spend some time talking about that. Not nearly as much now, because these are things I haven't read yet. So, moving on into 2022, I'll finish the Belgariad, and then I'll move in audiobook version into Mistborn Era 2. The first two books there, The Alloy of Law and Shadows of Self, I've read already. So, I think they'd be good on audio now for my reread. But then I'll pick up a physical copy of The Bands of Mourning, never got around to that one, and that way I'll be ready well in advance of the final book of the Era 2 of Mistborn, which is The Lost Metal, announced to be coming out in November of 2022. So I'll be fresh and ready for that one. After Mistborn, getting that copy of The Bands of Morning read, I'm going to move on for my physical reading into The Expanse. Now, this will probably be the biggest series that I'll read in 2022. It's been heavily recommended by one of our Discordians, and it's a definite shift from much of what I read in 2021, so I'm looking forward to that. Plus, there is a TV series well acclaimed out there on The Expanse, and I want to watch it, but I don't want to watch it until I read the books. So I'm going to get these books taken care of in 2021, and the series will be waiting for me. Something I particularly like about reading The Expanse now is in 2021, the final book of the series was published. So it's done. I love when I can read something, I can start it knowing the finish is waiting for me, because George R. R. Martin still has me with issues. I want something to be done, and I want to know it's going to be worth the experience. I have complete confidence, based on recommendations, that The Expanse will not disappoint. While reading The Expanse, I imagine I'll have some more time for audiobooks. So this is where I figure, actually, I might dip back into Discworld. Again, I'm not sure how fast I'll get through some things, but there's a chance that I'll go and check out more of the Rincewind series of books. There are six of those, starting at Light Fantastic and going through Unseen Academicals. So those might make it into my audio reads. A little lighter fare, I, I think I could, I could do that. If I get through all of what I've described, and I truly hope I do, then the next things that I'll move on to in actually physically reading are the Ryria Revelations, and then flowing right into the Ryria Chronicles, all by Michael J. Sullivan. Uh, the Chronicles isn't done yet, so okay, I'll be committing to a series that I can't read the finish of yet, and the author... Yeah, he's got more to come, and he doesn't even think he'll have another one out in 2022. But that's okay. If it if they're as good as people have told me, yes, Emmeline, I'm talking to you, then uh, I think I'll be okay with that. Now, finally, if I get through all of that so far, and that would be about as much as I read in 2021, I've got some stretch goals 
maybe I'll get just a little farther in 2022. So next up would be a fairly short trilogy, the Wayward Pines trilogy by Blake Crouch. Uh, that has been recommended to me. After that, Zach wants me to read the Witcher series, and I'm loving the TV show, so why not? I don't think I'll ever play the games because I'm horrible at video games, but I might have to finish the set, who knows? But The Witcher, definitely looking forward to get to those by Andrzej Sapkowski. I probably mangled his name. The last thing that I've thrown at the very end, maybe I'll get to it in December, is the Fionavar Tapestry by Guy Gavriel K. That's some more classic fantasy that's been rec recommended to me by a few different people, uh, particularly our Discordian Jordan. So uh, I've heard a lot of good things. I know I'll enjoy it. I've put it on the list for 2022. Now, if I get all of that done, that's 64 books. And one of those two, maybe three of those are going to be some short story collections. So not as big, but it's a big goal. I will be highly entertained trying to get through it all. I mean, what a good thing to do to see how much fantasy and science fiction a person can read in a year. Not rushing it, just trying to find the time to enjoy the reading. I'm never feeling pressured with reading. It's something that it's just always a pleasure to do. And because I'm not pressured, I may not get through as much as some other people do, but I don't face reader burnout. Works for me. That's where I'll wrap up for this video. I hope you also have high hopes for what you're going to read in 2022 throughout the world of fantasy and sci-fi literature. Maybe some of the things I've shared here from 21 or what I'm looking ahead to in 22 has inspired you to add some things to your to-be-read list for this coming year. Be sure to like and subscribe here on our YouTube channel and follow us over on Twitter and you'll be able to see how we're doing as we work through books, both Zach and I, in this coming year, and we'd love to hear your experiences as well. Anything you have to say about the books we're reading, as well as sharing what you are finding, my TBR keeps getting longer because of people telling me what they've discovered and loved, so thank you for anything you'll share. I'd especially invite and encourage you to join us on Discord, and there is a Discord invite link down in the show notes for this video. That's where you can get together with a bunch of like-minded people who all love these kinds of stories and talk about them and talk about other things and just be goofy together. We have a great community on Discord and you are welcome to be a part of it. Bunch of good people, bunch of good fun. All right, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed and valued the video. And in the traditional way we always end our podcasts, I'll just say that I'll talk to you next time.